What is going on party people? My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to fully optimize your WordPress website using the Yoast SEO plugin. The Yoast SEO plugin is a free plugin that allows you to fully optimize and index your WordPress website for all major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. With the Yoast SEO plugin, you can fully optimize all the pages and posts on your website and display them how you want in the Google search results. On-page optimization is critical because you'll need to insert specific keywords that you want to rank for in the Google search results. The Yoast SEO plugin also fully supports rich snippets. With rich snippets, you can display your content in the search results in a clean, rich format to help you get more clicks and traffic to your website. Here is one of my blog posts that's ranking on the first page of Google, and this was structured and indexed with the Yoast SEO plugin. All right, so now that you guys have an understanding of what this plugin does, let me walk you guys through what you're gonna learn today in this Yoast SEO tutorial. First, I'll be walking you through how to install and configure the Yoast SEO plugin. There are some strategies that I'll share with you that's helping us rank posts on the first page of Google. I'll walk you through all of the general settings and tools to make sure that you're familiar of how the Yoast SEO plugin works. In section two, I'll show you how to fully integrate your WordPress website with the Google Search Console, Pinterest, and Bing in order to start indexing your website right away. This will help display your analytics, showing you your visitors and impressions, and if there's anything you can do to improve your website's performance. We will then submit our sitemap to Google, which basically tells Google your website is alive and ready to be crawled and indexed. In section three, I'll show you how to display your website in the Google search results. We will first optimize the pages of your website, like the home page, the about us page, and the contact page. This is important because it will present your website in a really nice clean format in the search results. I'll then show you how to fully optimize posts on your websites. Now we will be working with a website that has not been optimized whatsoever. And by the end of this video, our demo website will be fully optimized and all ready to go for all major search engines. So today I'll walk you through how to use the Yoast SEO plugin step-by-step -step to get optimal settings for your website. So you guys ready party people? All right, cool, all right. Let's first go to section one and install and configure the Yoast SEO plugin. All right, so here is the website that we are going to optimize. Now this website has no SEO plugin installed. So by the end of this video, this beautiful website will be fully optimized and all ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go back over here to dashboard. Now let's first install the Yoast SEO plugin. In order to do that, we're gonna scroll down over here under plugins and then click on add new. And under search plugins, we're gonna type in Yoast. So Y-O-A-S-T. And here's the plugin that we're going to install. It is the Yoast SEO plugin. As you guys can tell, it's a really popular SEO plugin with more than 5 million active installs and 27,000 plus positive reviews. Uh, Yoast is like the old school one. It's actually like the very first one that's come out and it's maintained a really good reputation. So right here, I'll click on install now and then we'll click on activate. Now, once you guys activate the plugin, you will then see that you have uh, some more options. So right here, you'll see Yoast here. So you'll have some SEO settings where you can access it. You guys can also access these settings here on the left side under Yoast SEO. So right here, I'll click on general. And here is the dashboard where they show you if there's any problems and they also give you some notifications, but they just want you to buy stuff and we don't need to buy anything right now. So we're good, you know, but right here, you'll see first time configuration. All right, so this is the first time configuration. And all we have to do here is we need to click on the start SEO data optimization. This will help get our website indexed a little bit more by working out all the technical issues with the website and the plugin. So right here, click on start SEO data optimization. And this should just take a few seconds. All right, cool. And once you guys do that, the Yoast plugin will index your website to improve any technical issues that you guys might come across. So next let's click on continue. So site representation. So what is your website representing? Are you a business or are you a solo person? If you are a business slash organization, you'll select organization. If you are a motivational speaker or a fake guru or something like that, you will then put person right there. Now I will show you guys how to create your username in just a bit. But for this example, I'll just select organization. So the name of your website, I'm gonna put darylwilson.com and the organization name. So like, what is your actual business name, right? So like, for example, you might have like a real estate agency and that might be like, you know, darylwilson.com, but the agency name is Daryl 
Wilson's like real estate, right? Or whatever the name is of your actual business, you'll go ahead and select it there, right? So that is the website name and then the organization name, right? So next we have the organization logo. Now this is very important because you guys want to upload a logo that represents your business because this will get indexed in the Google search results. Let me give you an example. So here I typed in Daryl Wilson and you guys will see that there's this little logo right here. In fact, Google is actually putting logos near all of these websites right here. So you wanna make sure that you incorporate a logo because this will display on the search results and also mobile devices. So right here, I'll click on the logo and you know, what are we gonna select guys? Here, we'll, we'll just, we'll copy Google. Hopefully they won't sue me, all right? So there we go. All right, cool, there's our logo, beautiful. And then we'll click on save and continue. Social profiles. This is where you want to insert your social profiles. And this is great because this will send social signals to those social platforms. That will help your website get ranked higher in the search results. All right, so this is my current fan page right here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this link and copy it and I'll just paste it in there. So you wanna do this for all of your social profiles. So if you have like a Twitter or you have a Facebook or if you have any other social profile, you want to go ahead and add these right here for the social profiles. Once you guys are done, you'll then click on save and continue. All right, personal preferences. Do you guys want Yoast spying on you and tracking all your information? This will help them improve their plugin. You can put no or yes, it really depends on you. And if you guys want to enroll in their newsletter, you guys can go ahead and put in your email. Again, you guys don't have to, you know, sometimes they just send a lot of spam, but sometimes it's useful. You guys know how it is, you know, it's just whatever. All right, we'll just go ahead and answer our email right there. And then we'll click on save and continue. All right, finished configuration, you guys are done. Not really, all right. Now, earlier I mentioned that if you guys are an influencer, we can create a user. And to do that, over here under users, you'll just click on add new. All right, a username, I'm gonna put Daryl99, and I'll just put Daryl Porto. Sorry guys, I can't see my, here we go, here we go. Daryl Porto at gmail.com. I can't see my keyboard, you know, my microphone's in front of my keyboard, so it's hard to, you know, uh, look at. So my first name is Daryl, and my last name is Wilson, and my website, www.darylwilson.com. Now, obviously guys, I'm on a demo domain right here, but you'll put the name of your website, right? And this person will be an admin, and then I'll click on add new user. All right, cool. So there is the new user right there, right? So Daryl99. And if we go back over here to Yoast and we go to SEO settings and under general, we can then go back over here to first time configuration. And right here under site representation, we can then switch this to person. And then you will then see that we can type in Daryl Wilson right there and voila. So that's how you guys can add a person or a business. All right, let's go back to organization, save changes. Okay. So now that you guys have gone through the basic first time configurations, let's go through the general Yoast options. So on the left side, we're gonna scroll down here and you're gonna see settings. So let's click on settings. Okay, so these are the general options. And remember earlier how there was site representation, you guys can always access all those options here under the general tab. But for the site features, you just wanna make sure that you have the SEO analysis checked, readability analysis checked, and the insights checked right there. If we scroll down right here, you're gonna see that there's other site structure options like cornerstone content. I'll explain what all these are and we'll come across all these options a little bit later, but you guys just wanna make sure that these are enabled by default, right? Uh, here as well, you just wanna make sure that this is all checked. I just wanna make sure, cause if you guys have these unchecked, then some of these options won't display during the tutorial, okay? All right, site basics, here we go. So next we have the website name in the alternative website name and the tagline. Now we already previously set this information, but if you guys do want to update it, you guys can do it right here. So for the website name, I'll just put Daryl Wilson. I could put darylwilson.com. It really just depends on what my what I want my site represented on the search results, but I think Daryl Wilson will do just fine. So next we have the alternative website name, and this is good if you guys do have a very long website name, you guys can always insert something shorter and the shorter name will appear usually on mobile devices. And then we have a tagline. So you know how Nike has the just do it, right? You guys can insert a tagline for your website. This will be something like home of the, see, home of the best WordPress 
tutorials. Wait, wait, the tutorials, there we go. Next, we have the title separator, and you guys can go ahead and adjust this. Now, this isn't that important, but if you guys do select a separator in the on-page optimization, this will be the default separator that will display. We'll talk more about this a little later, but uh, you guys can always change this anytime you want. Next, we have the site image. Now, if someone shares your website on Facebook or on a social media website, which image do you want to represent your websites? Well, you can upload it here. Now, I'll go ahead and just select this one right here and I'll click on select. Now, just remember, this is the image that's going to display when someone shares your like homepage or your about us page or your contact page, not necessarily your posts, but just your general website. So make sure that this is something that's relevant to your business. Here we have site preferences. This is essentially saying that only editors and admins can use the advanced options for Yoast and the Yoast sidebar. We'll talk more about that when we talk about on-page optimization, but you guys can leave that on for now. Usage tracking, that's strictly up to you. Here we have site policies. So next we have site policies, and this is really only relevant if you guys are a large news network or if you're a large publisher. Now this option is only available in the pro version, but for most of us, we don't really need it. Like if you're a small business or something, you don't need to really consider it. So Google was tired of websites creating fake news and spreading misinformation. So they released an update here that wanted these publishers to give them more information about their websites to judge their experience of the actual websites, right? because anyone can make a website and make fake news. So that's where they wanted to start ranking news networks based off their experience. So again, this really doesn't apply to most of us. If you're a news network, you guys might consider it. But if you're just a regular website, you don't need to um, consider this option at all. So we'll go ahead and scroll down and then we'll click on save changes. All right, cool. Now let's go over here and click on settings again. Okay, so we went through the site features, the site basics. So next we have the site representation and we walked you guys through these options earlier. So if you're a business slash organization, you'll select that. If you're a person, you'll select this option. And here you'll put in your organization name. Now, if your organization name is very long, you guys can uh, add in an alternative organization name to add a smaller version. And that's only because some businesses names were getting so long that in the Google search result for mobile, it looked very cramped, right? So if it's very long, you guys can put something a little smaller right here. And next we have the organization logo. Now make sure that you guys do upload a logo right here because this will actually appear in the Google search results. So right here, you'll see I have a logo of my website. So that is where the logo will display. It'll display in the search results and also for mobile devices. And then right here, you'll go ahead and put in your social profiles like your Facebook, your Twitter, and then also you can add more right there. And once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and click on the next one, which is site connections. Now this is the site connections where you can integrate Bing, Google, and also Pinterest. We're gonna do this a little bit later, so not to worry. We will come back to this in section two. Here we have homepage. Now this is the on-page optimization where you guys can actually edit the actual pages and posts of your website, but we'll come back to that in section three. Here we have posts. So this is the post section, and this is going to determine what our posts look like in the search results by default if we don't custom edit our own posts, which most of us will, but uh, this is just like a fallback insurance plan just in case you guys forget, right? So let me give you guys an example. Here is a uh, post of mine, right? And all I do here is I just put the name of the post, right? In fact, many authors, you'll see that they just put the name of the post they don't put like the website name, they don't put the dates, they don't really add any separators. Uh, you can tell that all they wanna do here is just put the name of the post. So for optimal settings for posts, you're just going to remove all this right here and only have the title. You only want the title of your blog post in the search results. And for meta description, we're going to click on insert variable and we're gonna type in excerpts. So excerpt is essentially content from that actual post. So if you guys forget to actually add in meta description, it will take 
some content from your blog and automatically put it in the search results, right? So that is the optimal setting for post. It is the title of your article and just excerpt, you know, it's just some general information about the actual article that you wrote. And also you wanna make sure that show post in search results is checked. That is very important. <laughs> make sure that is checked. I don't even know why they have that option there. They should take that out of Yoast to be honest. And here we have social appearance. Now, if you guys do forget to add in a featured image, they have a insurance plan where you can like have one, you know, uploaded by default, but this really is not needed because you're always going to add a featured image to all of your blog posts. So we'll go ahead and scroll down here. So next we have schema. So for the page type, you wanna make sure that it's selected as web page by default. These other pages right here are not relevant to you know blogging at all. So just make sure it's selected to web page. Now here we have article type, and this is where confusion might start. So we have article by default and then blog post. Now a blog post is something from a person's point of view or perspective. So essentially it's for like travel vloggers or someone's you know, traveling or they want to talk about their own personal experience, they would select blog posts. But for most of us, you're gonna select article and this is something like how to build a website, top 10 things to buy, how to form an LLC, stuff like that, right? So uh, by default, I leave mine to article type and this is default for most websites. Next, we have additional settings where we have enable SEO controls. Make sure that is checked, okay? And then we'll click on save changes. So again, these are the optimal settings here for a post. If you guys do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let's go over here to pages. Now pages, let me give you guys some information here. So over here, I'll go to my websites. Now here I have Daryl Wilson slash home of the free WordPress tutorials. So I have the name of the website, a separator and the tagline. Now this really depends on what you want to add, but you guys can always make something custom a little bit later. So for example, if I wanted to do title, separator, and then tagline, all I gotta do is select title of the website, separator, and then here I'll enter the little percent sign, and then we'll put something like tagline, right? So that's essentially my formula right here, right? Where I have the, um, oops, sorry, the title, separator, and then we have the tagline. But it doesn't really matter, right? So for example, I'll go to Hostinger. So we'll scroll down here and they made something custom, right? The hosting platform made for you dash go align with Hostinger. So you guys can make something custom and I do recommend that. And we'll talk more about how to do that in section three. Also SiteGround, right? Let's see what SiteGround did. SiteGround did SiteGround colon and then they have a tagline. So it really depends on what you guys wanna do with your website, but I'll walk you guys through how to make a custom one a little bit later. I personally like doing custom on all my pages. I don't really like using these formulas, but I'm just showing you guys uh, what I did on my website, just in case you might wanna do the same. And then next we have the meta description. And guys, I really recommend that you guys always add your own meta description. For example, here is my contact us page, right? And on my contact us page, we have contact me dash joewilson.com. And this right here is all custom content. So right now, essentially, we're just creating the formula just in case we forget. So next we have schema and we have the web page type. So web page. And since this is not an article, we're just gonna select none. And we'll scroll down and click on save changes. All right, cool. So that is pretty much it for the content types. Now this right here under footers and headers, if you guys do have custom post types from ACF, or if you guys have a custom post type from a plugin, they will also be displayed here. But for my footers and headers, I don't really want them displayed. So for Elementor, you guys might have like landing pages here or something like that. Or if there's any sort of custom post type, they will also be displayed under content types but I don't want my headers and footers displayed in the search engine. I mean, that doesn't make sense, right? So I'm just going to disable that. This is actually from my theme. So you'll see we have headers and also uh, footers. So again, this is just for any sort of custom post type that is on your websites. All right, cool. Next we have categories. So categories is pretty simple. We wanna make sure that we get rid of archives. We wanna get rid of the page. We just want the name of the category, a separator, and then the name of your website. That's 
standard for most websites, but this is only if like people are actually searching for categories on the search results, which is very, very few people. I mean, who cares you know, about our categories? And then for meta description, I'm also gonna add an excerpt as well, uh, just in case I forget, but I'll show you guys how to uh, custom make all this in section three. Social appearance, uh, same thing. And then also we have the same options right here. Uh, we wanna make sure that these are both checked right here and then click on save changes. All right, cool. So those are the categories. And then we also have portfolios. So if you guys do have portfolios on your website, I would do the same exact formula. So term title, right? And then also we have the separator and then also the site title. And then here is excerpt again, right? So just to make sure that we do this again here, excerpt. And scrolling down, I'll go ahead and click on save changes. All right, cool. So let's go back and scroll up. And now we have product categories. Now, if you guys do have products on your website, you guys can display the same thing for product categories. So over here, we'll go ahead and put the term title, separator, site title. Here, I'll post an excerpt as well. Okay. And then we'll scroll down and we'll also click on save changes. So that is for the product categories. Now also here we have shipping classes. Now I don't really recommend that you guys have shipping classes indexed on Google. So I'm going to uncheck this because I don't really want people to know about my shipping classes, right? So I'll click on save changes. If you guys do have things that are unnecessary, like picks for categories or any of the custom post types that are displayed, you guys can also remove those. Now here we have product tags. And I personally recommend that you guys always select this to off. The reason why for tags and taximonies, sometimes this will create duplicate content, which could get your website penalized. Over here under the Google forums as well, many people do recommend it to no index because this can create duplicate content and you may get penalized in the future. So for tags and taximonies, I usually have that selected to off. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. You guys are more than welcome to leave it on. I mean, these are very minimal settings, but um, if you guys do have tons and tons and tons of products, then maybe selecting it to off might be beneficial because you don't want to get penalized, right? And that happens sometimes. Here we also have post tags. So for tags as well, I always select this to off just because I don't want to make the chance and risk getting penalized for duplicate contents. Over here as well, under the Google Search Console, one of the reps from Google, they recommend to select it to no index for tags, categories, and author pages, because it's just not really relevant for the search engines and you could get penalized for duplicate content. So that's, I mean, that's my opinion. I, I've been in SEO for a long time and I select all that to no index. Also here for my custom post type, I'm going to select this to off. If you guys do have custom post types that display here, uh, you might want to turn those off because um, generally I don't want pics pop up categories displayed. <laughs> you know, there's no reason for that. All right. And now that we've done with the categories and tags, let's go over here and click on advanced. So over here we have optimization crawl. And this is only really relevant for your SEO company. So if you guys don't know what this is, just leave it. So next we have breadcrumbs. Now, if your theme does support breadcrumbs, you guys can enable breadcrumbs. Essentially, it's just a little separator, guys. It's really not that critical. Um, on my blog right here, we don't use breadcrumbs. We just have a category, a colon, and then we have the name of the actual category. So the middle part here would be the actual breadcrumb for your category pages. So it's up to you if you guys wanna you know, insert breadcrumbs, but uh, I've never really been a fan of it. <laughs> I've never really used it, but if you guys want to insert breadcrumbs on your website, you guys can enable it if your theme supports it. Okay, and here you can enable breadcrumbs for post types, like you know your posts. These right here are not relevant because these are custom post types that have no relevance to our blog posts. So these will not display regardless. And uh, you can do the same thing for categories if you want it to display for categories. And again, these right here are just custom post types, so they will not be displayed on our websites, right? Okay, well, that is pretty much breadcrumbs. You know, it's kind of a useless feature, but some people prefer it, but uh, yeah, there we go. 
So next we have author archives and you guys should only have this on if you guys have multiple writers on your websites. If you do not have multiple writers, I would leave this unchecked because this will prevent duplicate content. And this is also Google's recommendation. So they recommend to turn this off if you're only solo blogging or if you have one content writer on your website, right? So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. So just to reiterate, if you are a large website with many, many authors, you should leave it on. If you are not, then you should leave it off, right? That'll protect you from getting penalized by Google. And then also we have the date archives. Date archives, same thing. We would want to go ahead and disable this. Yoast actually does know that this can cause duplicate content. They should disable this by default, but they're not but I'm going to disable mine by default just because I don't want to get penalized for duplicate contents. Many of the archive pages, the tags pages, um, they should always be set to no index just to prevent duplicate content. And the same thing for format archives. We want to make sure that this is off right here and then click on save changes. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, special pages, here we go. So next we have these special pages and internal search pages I never even see on Google. Four, four pages are basically saying if someone tries to find a page that is broken on your website, it will say page not found, a separator and a site title within the Google search. So these are very minimal and won't apply to most people. So don't worry about it too much. So that is special pages. And then also here we have media pages. And let me quickly explain what this does, but you should always have this selected to off. So never have this on. Now, if I go over here to Google, right? And I type in Daryl Wilson websites, here is a picture of me. If I click on this picture, it's going to redirect me to my actual websites. So you'll see that it doesn't take me to the actual image. It takes me to where the page where the image is located. Now, if I have this to on, what will happen is if I go over here and I click on the image, it'll just put me right here. It'll just give me like an image. It'll just take me to the exact image right there. So make sure that you guys always have this selected to off, right? Cause you want to redirect them to the actual uh, page where the image is located, right? Makes sense. All right, cool. All right. And the very last one is RSS. And lastly, we have the RSS feeds. Now this is actually optimal settings. And what this does is this tells search engines that when you write post that it first appeared on your website. So you are the main author. So for example, this post, and it'll link a backlink to your post first appeared on your website, which is, you know, darylwilson.com or whatever, and you are the person that created the post and is gonna get credit for it. This is important because there are products on the internet that will try to crawl websites and steal their content and rank for that specific content. It's pretty messed up, you know, but there are scrapers on the internet and when you write blog posts, they're hoping that you forget so they'll steal your post and try to rank for it. This right here will protect you from those scrapers. So make sure that you guys do have this under the RSS feed section. And that is pretty much it for the general settings. Now there are other options right here that you guys can check out like integrations where you can you know, check out some of these integrations right here. Uh, also over here under tools, there is this little start SEO data optimization where you can get some more information and insights on your internal linking for your websites. And it can make a few tweaks and help you guys out. So that's always cool. Do not mess with the file editor. This is strictly for robot text files. And if you guys don't know what that is, just don't touch it, all right? If you don't know what it is, just don't mess with it because you guys can easily break your websites. Then also they have the Academy right here where you guys can you know, learn more about SEO right here. Uh, also, I think we can go over here. Oh, there we go. All right, cool, we don't gotta scroll down. Uh, over here, they have the premium where you guys can uh, upgrade to their premium plan if you guys wanna do that. Personally, guys, my honest opinion, I don't think it's that necessary. The only thing useful here, to be quite honest, is the actual recommending link structures and internal linking. This will recommend other articles while you are writing specific content for your websites. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we talk about posts, but this is probably the only useful thing. Everything else, it's just like not that useful at all. You know, I love Yoast, but you know, I just don't find any of this stuff useful whatsoever. Uh, next, let's go over here. 
There's workouts, redirects, and then also support. So if you guys do have any issues with anything, if you guys get any errors, you guys can go ahead and uh, contact Yoast right here and they should be able to help you guys out with any issues for the Yoast SEO plugin. All right, cool. So installing the plugin and going through the settings is pretty simple, right? So now let's go to section two and let's fully integrate our websites with the Google Search Console, Bing, and also Pinterest. This is a critical part of the video because this will help index and establish your websites in the Google search results. So you guys ready? Let's dive into it. So now let's connect our website with the search engines. So over here under Yoast, we'll go over here to SEO settings and then we'll click on settings. And what we're gonna do is we're going to now go over here to Site Connections. Now we're gonna integrate Bing, Google, and also Pinterest. Believe it or not, guys, Bing is actually gaining in popularity. I know before like people thought it was just for old people and stuff, but um, they've actually integrated AI in their search result, which is leading a lot of people to switch over to Bing. But we're first gonna integrate this with Google. So right here, it says, get your verification code in the Google Search Console. Go ahead and click on this link right here. Okay, now you guys will need to make a Gmail account in order for this to work. So if you guys don't have a Gmail account, you guys can create one. If you guys do have one, you guys can just sign in to any Gmail account and it'll create one for you automatically. So I'll go ahead and select this one here and I'll click on next. All right, so the first thing it's gonna say, you don't have a property, right? So we're gonna add a property. And to do that, I'll go over here and click on add a property. So here we have two options and we have domain and URL prefix. You guys wanna use URL prefix. The domain option, you have to mess with your DNS records and that can take time. So let's go ahead and enter it right here. Now you guys do need to enter the HTTPS and then the colon and the two dashes. So https.tutorialdomain.com and then I'll click on continue. All right, so now I want you to verify ownership. And to do that, we're going to click on the HTML tag and we're gonna copy this. And all we have to do is go back to our websites and we're just going to paste it in there right there under Google. And it's gonna get rid of all of the stuff that we don't need. So it's just going to take the actual uh, property here. So I'll click on save changes. All right, cool. And once that's done, we'll go back over here and then I'll click on verify. Now this can take time depending on your server. So if it's declined, just try it again in maybe 10, 20 minutes, but I'll go ahead and click on verify. Awesome, so Google has recognized it and they have verified ownership. So I'll go ahead and click on go to property. All right, and this is where information will display about your website. So you see your clicks, you'll see your impressions, and they will tell you about any errors or any problems that you might be having with your actual website. Now leave this tab open because we're gonna come to this tab a little bit later when we submit our sitemap to uh, Google. All right, congratulations. Our website is now fully integrated with Google. Now let's do the same thing for Bing. So let's go ahead and click on Bing Webmaster Tools. All right, now if you guys don't have an account, you guys will need to create an account. Uh, I already do have an account, so I'm gonna click on sign in. And I'm going to sign up with my Microsoft account. Okay, so once you guys do that, it'll bring you to this page right here. Now, I like to use the Google Search Console method because we have already integrated with Google Search Console. So right here, I'll click on import. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna take all the information from the Google Search Console and integrate it with Microsoft Bing. So I'll click on continue here. And now I'll sign in with that same account that we just created with Google. So it was this one right here. And we're going to give Bing access to that information. Here I'll click on allow. So here are the websites for that account, but I just wanna make sure that only this one right here is integrated. So I'll click on import. And there we go. So our website is now fully integrated with Microsoft Bing. So let's go ahead and click on done. And we will also see information about our websites, like the clicks, the impressions. And impressions is cool because it'll let you know that if your website is growing in the search results. The more impressions, the higher the pages and posts that you have are ranking in the Google search results. 
And then if we scroll down right here, you guys will see we have SEO reports and also URL submission. Now, if that did not work for you guys, you can always access that screen again by clicking on this drop down and clicking on add sites. And this is where you guys can add your site manually. And again, it'll give you another HTML code. And all you'll have to do is go back to your website and just paste that code in there and you'll be just fine. But as of right now, our website is fully integrated with Microsoft and also Google. So now that our website is fully integrated with Bing and also Google, now let's go ahead and integrate it with Pinterest. Pinterest is actually important, guys, if you guys have a lot of images because it will index all those images on Pinterest and it can get you a lot of traffic. So I'll click on Pinterest. So here is my Pinterest. And if we scroll down, you guys will see we have a lot of Elementor templates. We actually do sell all these templates on my website. And this actually does bring us like a few grand in revenue every single month. So it is a great option, you know, to get more traffic and backlinks to your websites. But once you guys do log into Pinterest, up here, you'll click on settings. And here we have claimed accounts. We can go ahead and claim a new website. So right here, I'll click on claim. And all we got to do is just take this tag right here and then we just have to paste it on our websites. So I'll go back over here and we'll paste that. And then I'll click on save changes. Now, one thing to know guys, I know it doesn't show anything for Bing, but our website is fully integrated for Bing already. So don't worry about it if there's no verification code because we use the Google search console method to verify our websites. So now that we insert the Pinterest code, we'll go back over here and then I'll click on continue. We'll go ahead and enter the URL of our websites and then click on verify. Now, sometimes guys, this does give an error. If that does happen, just come back in like five, 10 minutes. As you guys can see, it says there was no relevant meta tag found, but there is. So just give it a few minutes and just come back to it like every 20 minutes and then just verify it and it should work just fine. All right, so now that our website is fully integrated with Bing, Pinterest, and also Google, the last thing we need to do is submit our sitemap. Now over here, I'll go to quick search and I'll just type in sitemap. So here you'll see site features, you'll see XML sitemap, and this will take us to our sitemap. Right here, just click on view the XML sitemap. Essentially what this is guys, this is a roadmap. This is a roadmap for Google and other search engines telling them what to index and what not to index. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this link right here and we're gonna go back to the Google Search Console. Now on the left side, you're gonna see sitemaps and right here, you'll see tutorialdomain.com, I'll paste that. And I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff right here. And you want it to look just like this. So tutorialdomain.com dash sitemap underscore index dot XML. Once you guys insert that, we'll click on submit. All right, and then we'll click on got it. Essentially what the sitemap is guys, is it's a roadmap for Google telling them what to index and what not to index based off the settings that we have adjusted with Yoast. And as you guys will see right here, it says success. And if it does not say success, just refresh the page and it's to say success and there you go. So that's how you guys can submit your sitemap to the Google Search Console. And then once that's done, we'll go over here to Bing as well. And on the left side, you'll see sitemaps. Here it says submit sitemap, go ahead and click on that. And also just paste that in there right there. And that's how we can submit our sitemap to Microsoft Bing. So right here, you'll see it says processing. Now Microsoft is a little slower than Google. So just give this like 10 to 20 minutes and it should work just fine. All right, welcome to section three. So in this part of the video, I'll walk you guys through on-page optimization. Now guys, on-page optimization is critical for SEO success. So we're going to optimize all the pages and posts of your websites, and then we'll insert specific keywords and display how you want it in the Google search results. I'll also give you guys tips on what kind of keywords you guys should put in the meta description, and this will help your website get noticed and ranked on the search results. So let's dive into it. All right, party people, welcome to the on-page section of this video. So in this part of the video, I'll show you guys how to fully optimize the pages and posts of your website using Yoast. So let's go over here to dashboard, and here you're gonna see pages. Let's just click on all pages. 
All right, now here is a list of all of our pages on the websites. Now, I highly recommend that you guys actually optimize every page of your websites. Now, this is the front page of my website. So right here, I wanna click on edits. So this is my home page, and we use Elementor to make the home page, so we don't need to mess with this. But we're gonna scroll down, and then you're gonna see Yoast SEO. Now, this is what our website will look like on mobile devices, and this is what it will look like on the desktop results. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to actually change this, right? So what I first wanna do here is I want to go ahead and open this up in the Yoast editor on the right side. So I'll click on Yoast SEO. And here we have Google Preview. And this is a better way on how to edit it, in my personal opinion, right? So for your homepage, I highly recommend not to use these formulas. Remember earlier how we use these formulas like title, separator, and tagline? What I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all this right here and also I wanna get rid of the excerpt. So I wanna start from scratch. So you guys can just backspace that. Now for the SEO title, you guys might wanna put something here relevant to your websites. Let me give you guys an example of what I did. So here's my website. We have Daryl Wilson dash home of the free WordPress tutorials. So I have the name of the websites dash and then I just added the tagline. Now you guys can add anything that you want for your websites. So earlier we talked about SiteGround and Hostinger. We can also do like name here, all right? So they have the name of the website, dash, tagline, right? Let's check out the Hilton, the Hilton Hotels, right? Hilton Hotels have done hotels by Hilton, dash, and they added in some just random content. So you guys can add any content that you want for your websites. So for example, I'll put Daryl Wilson and then space dash home of the free WordPress tutorials. Now also, when you guys are inserting the SEO title, make sure that you guys enter relevant keywords for your websites. Here I typed in WordPress tutorials because I am relevant to WordPress tutorials. If we go over here to the Hilton, they're gonna put hotels by Hilton. So they put in hotels and they also inserted that in their description. And then this is the Marriott. So Marriott Bonvoy Hotels, book directly and get exclusive rates. And then for their meta description, they insert in the hotels, Marriott. You can see they entered in hotels again and hotels one more time. So you do wanna insert keywords that are relevant to your website in order to get ranked for those in the Google search results. So let's go over here. All right, so again, I am Daryl Wilson. So I am doing WordPress tutorials and teaching you guys how to use Yoast. So I'll put Daryl Wilson. And then here I can enter like a brackets. I can enter in like a dash. I can enter in anything I want, right? Like literally anything I want right here. But what I'll do is I'll just put in a little dash, all right? And then home of the free WordPress tutorials. Now notice here how I capitalize every letter of a word, right? You wanna do the same. And I'll insert my meta description. So I'll go ahead and paste in my meta description. Create your WordPress website. Join me today. I help thousands of people create businesses online, no BS, no paid courses, just free WordPress tutorials. Learn WordPress today. Now you guys can see that there is a limit, right? So you guys can't insert tons and tons of meta description, but this is actually relevant. And here you'll see that WordPress websites is related to WordPress, uh, create businesses online, free WordPress tutorials, learn WordPress today. So you do want to enter in keywords that are relevant to your actual websites. So here you'll see that we typed in our SEO title and the meta description. Again, just make sure that you have relevant keywords for your websites. So now that we optimize this for a desktop, now let's click on mobile results. So this is what your website will look like on the mobile device. So we have the name of the websites, we have the information that we inserted, and then I'll click on updates. Now, again, we can also edit this using the editor. I think it's much better actually. So right here, I'll click on Google preview. And here you guys can go ahead and update this to your liking. So you can update the SEO title and also the meta description specifically for mobile devices, okay? So that's how you guys can optimize the pages of your website. I highly recommend to go to every page and optimize every page of a website manually instead of relying on the formula given to us by Yoast. Now also right here, you guys are gonna see other options like Facebook preview. So you'll see that uh, we can go ahead and add this for Facebook. So I'll go ahead and select an image right here. 
And the one that we selected by default was, I think it was this one right here, right? There we go. And then we can put a Facebook title. So I'll put Daryl Wilson, home of the free WordPress tutorials. And I will also use the same exact description for our meta description, right? Here I'll click on return to your page and then click on update. And we can do the same thing for Twitter as well. So we can go ahead and insert something for Twitter. So I entered in some quick content right here. So I'll just click on return to your page and then also updates. So next we have some more options right here on the right side. We have schema, advance, cornerstone content and insights. So for schema, we already set this earlier. Just make sure that this selects web page, right? Because this is a web page after all, and this is not an article, so we don't need anything there. So for the advanced tab, just make sure that you guys leave this standard. Um, I wouldn't recommend adjusting this for meta robots and stuff like that. So make sure that you guys just leave the advanced section standard. And lastly, there is cornerstone content, but this is really only relevant for blogs. And this is basically saying, select this if this is the most important article about your website, but you would not activate this for pages. So that is pretty much the Yoast SEO plugin summed up as far as the desktop and the mobile preview goes. Again, I highly recommend to go to every page and optimize this for all of your pages. These other options right here, like SEO analysis, these are not really important because all they're really doing here is just giving you tips and stuff, but it's not really imperative that you know all this. And a lot of this is only available in the pro version. So now that I showed you guys all the options for the pages, now let's talk about posts. So let's go over here to post and click on all posts. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and select an article. So there's this one right here, which is how to start an LLC in seven steps. So pages and posts are essentially the same, right? So I'll click on the Yoast icon right here. And what we can do is we can actually take a look at this in the Google preview. So how to start an LLC in seven steps, you'll see that we have the mobile results and also the desktop. Now notice here how this has changed. So we only have the title, we have the slug and then the excerpt, right? For the mobile results, you'll see we have the same thing. Title, meta description. This is because in the settings, remember earlier how we set this to the default standard? So all the posts will display this by default. If you guys do wanna change this for your blog post, you guys can just go ahead and do the same thing. You can backspace it, or let's see, backspace, and then how to start an amazing LLC in five simple steps. So you'll see right here that we gave this article a custom name, right? So I can add in more to this, like, you know, darylwilson.com or something like that, right? That's if you wanna go that route. But again, I always think that just the title is enough. Now I have seen websites actually incorporate the date. So right here, if I type in date, you'll see that what Yoast will do, it'll actually pick up the date right here and incorporate this for all of your articles, which is a good strategy because some people might want to click on it if they think it's more relevant, right? But I'd put that under parentheses. This is what I would do, like something like that. And that's a good strategy, right? Because if you guys saw this article, you're gonna say, oh my gosh, this was created today. It's fresh content, let's click on it. And that is a good strategy, right? So that's how you guys can create a custom title for your blog posts. And the same thing for excerpt, you know, instead of actually relying on the article right here, you guys can get rid of this and then create your own excerpt. And then here under the meta description, I'll just throw in some random content I found on the internet. So this is pretty cool, right? Choose a name for your LLC, obtain your EIN, prepare an LLC, open a bank account for your LLC. Notice what they've done here. They have consistently entered LLC, right? There's LLC, LLC, and then also LLC because they want to rank for that specific keyword. So always make sure that when you guys are creating meta description for your post that you incorporate the keywords that you want to rank for in the meta description. And once you guys are done, just click on return to your post and then click on updates. So now let's talk about the rich snippets. Now over here, you guys will see that uh, I typed in how to build backlinks to your product pages and you guys will see that my website is ranking number one. These right here are all sponsored ads, so they really don't count. And you'll see that uh, Yoast has actually marked up our content as rich snippet. So you'll see complete e-commerce SEO guide, how to build more backlinks to your product pages. Now, if you guys have a lot of relevant content, it'll display it in a really nice, beautiful formats. 
Now, if I click on this right here, it will take the user to my actual article where they can learn how to build more backlinks to our product pages. Now, what I'll do is I'll show you guys what we actually inserted for the meta description. So this is the actual post right here, and I'll go over ahead and click on Google Preview. And all I did here was type in, you know, learn how to build backlinks to your product pages for your e-commerce websites, build more backlinks to your product pages with these simple tricks. So simply by adding in the proper meta description, you guys could possibly get marked up by schema and have really nice rich snippets in the Google search results looking just like this. Now you guys also might be asking yourself, how did you get this article ranking on the very first page of Google? Well, we actually use ChatGPT and we also use a combination of our images. We included a lot of backlinks to other websites and we incorporated a lot of interlinking. Now, if you look at this article, it's actually rich with information. We really wanted to show people, you know, how to build more backlinks to your product pages. We showed examples, we gave really good options like guest blogging, and we also talked about the Google Merchant Center on how to upload your products for free. You can see here how we even show them these are paid and these are free to really provide a lot of value, right? Now, if you guys go to Google and type in how to write high ranking blog posts, oh wait, I'm sorry, write, whoops, I am ranking number one. So we are ranking number one for how to write high ranking blog posts. And if you guys click on this article and you guys read it, you guys will learn the secrets of how to write high ranking blog posts. In this article right here, we give you a lot of information, what to include, uh, things to talk about. Make sure that you guys do go through this article, read as much as you can. You know, I know it's a lot to read, but uh, we provide all the information that you guys need to write high ranking blog posts and anybody on the internet can create number one content for Google. You just have to write good content and also write longer content. You learn all about that in this article. So I'll leave this article for you guys in the description of this video to help you guys with your SEO journey. All right, party people, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will go ahead and leave these articles in the description below this video, like how to write high ranking blog posts. And we also do have a lot of content about ChatGPT on how we actually rank number one with ChatGPT on an article that was created solely with AI. So I will leave these videos for all of you in the description below of this video. All right, party people, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Now, the Yoast SEO plugin is a great SEO plugin. I personally use it on my WordPress website. And if you guys are gonna ask me, what is the best SEO plugin, Daryl? Is it Rank Math, All One SEO, is it Yoast? You know, I'll be very honest and be very blunt. They all really do the same thing. They're all very similar. The most important part of SEO on your website is the on-page optimization, and it's the quality of the content that you produce, right? If you produce amazing content, that content will rank. So uh, just focus on quality of the content and you'll be just fine. My name is Daryl Wilson. I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.